I think certainly uh, being focused on something that you're confident will have high value to someone else and just being really rigorous in making that assessment because people are, tend, tend to, a natural human tendency is wishful thinking. So a, a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit? That is a really difficult thing to, to tell. You, can you tell the difference between those two things? So you need to be sort of very rigorous. I think certainly extremely tenacious and and then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour weeks every week. That, that the, all those things improve the odds of success. If other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if you're doing the same thing, you know that you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. When my brother and I were starting our first company, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. And we, we showered at the, the YMCA and uh, we're, we're so hot up, we had just one computer. So the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. So sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period and in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. So uh, work hard like every waking hour. It's the, the thing I would, I would say, if, if you, particularly if you're starting a company. And I mean, if you do the simple math, say like, okay, if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, you'll get twice as, done, as much done in the course of a year as the, as, uh, the other company. In 2001, I was just, just talking to a friend of mine, he asked me what I was going to do after PayPal, and I thought, well, you know, I was wondering, like, um, I'd like to get involved in space, but I, I just didn't think there was anything I could do as an individual, um, and, uh, but I was curious as to when we'd, NASA would be sending a team to Mars, because that was always going to be the thing to do after the moon. I figured that, that there'd be some plan, and I'd just go to the website, and, and I could read the, you know, the schedule. Actually, there wasn't anything on, on the website, and is it secret? I don't know. Uh, so, but it turned out that um, that NASA had done a study on what it would cost to send to, to do a manned Mars mission, and this was under Bush the first. And I suppose he asked for a 90-day study shortly after taking office, and NASA came back with a $500 billion price tag. And he said, "Okay, maybe not." That's yeah. when $500 mm -hmm. billion was serious money. So, so then that got totally shelved, and it was like you were not allowed to talk about any kind of crewed mission to Mars at NASA. Anyway, so I, I, but I thought, well, uh, if I can do something that would galvanize public interest. That, and, and then that public interest would translate to uh, additional appropriations for NASA and increase the, their budget, then, then maybe they could do it. So, the first, so actually what I sort of thinking I would do is uh, send a, a small greenhouse to the surface of Mars with seeds and dehydrated gel and then and the public tends to respond to precedents and superlatives. So this would be the furthest that life's ever traveled, the first life on Mars. I tried to, try to figure out how to do this with the proceeds that I had from, from PayPal and uh, I was able to figure out how to get the cost of the, the spacecraft down and the communications and, and, and the little greenhouse and everything. But the one thing I couldn't compress was the cost of launch. There were only a few options, and the U.S. options were way too expensive. And so I ended up going to Russia three times to try to buy. It, it wouldn't really matter. Like, I actually came to the conclusion that my initial premise was wrong. It's really fundamental to psyche. So if people think there's a way, I think it would actually get a lot of support. They need, it, it can't be just banging your head against the wall. You've got to believe that this can be done without breaking the federal budget. So uh, that's when I said, okay, well, is there some way to affect the cost of space transport? And got together with a group of people over a series of Saturdays just to just try to understand, is there something super ex fundamentally super expensive about rockets, or, or can the cost be substantially improved? We had, we had a bunch of those kind of brainstorming sessions, and I couldn't see I couldn't see any fundamental obstacle to improving the cost of rockets, so mm -hmm. that, that's when I started SpaceX. point I would say the, the probability of success was definitely less than 50%. I thought it would most likely not succeed, um, but it was worth a try.